Microphone check, two, one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's the Bearded Man podcast with your favorite, the world's favorite bearded man, Bob Bay, episode 51. We out here. We're making it into the 50s, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, baby, does it feel good. I just posted a little story tonight on my IG, and I said, 50 episodes in, and I'm just getting warmed up. Let's go. I feel great feel fantastic with the way this project is going one episode at a time brick by brick we're gonna keep dropping that fire ass content even while the world is sleeping on your boy with the freshest beard lineup in the game right now come on baby somebody's gonna see this from a mile away and say who is this bearded man what is this podcast we need to take this worldwide baby let's go high energy As you guys and gals already know and should expect every single time you hit play on a podcast by your boy, I'm literally like a psycho, bumping music, dancing, cranking out push-ups. I do so much like mental work before I jump into these podcasts because when I record these, this is the end of my day, right? It's after 6 p.m. I'm already tapped out. I've been up since 5, 36 o'clock. Excuse me. So the way for your boy to bring up that energy is by literally having a dance party and literally banging out push-ups and literally just cranking up the energy because I want to bring you guys and gals the highest level of the bearded man. And so we're just getting warmed up. Uh, we ca- weekend recap. Uh, very, very good weekend, I'd say. Um, a, lot of, a lot of checks off the bucket list. You know, or not off the bucket list, but a lot of things in motion. Went to a little uh, wine and karaoke night at my friend's Saturday night. Social distancing was outside, so that was good. You boys, back off the booze. I don't think I've really talked about it on the pod recently or posted too much about it, but you boys been off the booze for... I, I'm not going to keep a running tab like I did uh, when I was first doing that no booze challenge, but it's been a solid four weeks, and I feel fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, staying focused on myself, you know what I'm saying? Trying to cross off a lot of things that I want to do and uh, I'm realizing that just you know kind of stepping away for a bit makes me feel good and it's not easy during the holidays because this is clearly the time when everyone's like full send you know holidays drinks blah 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 but I'm doing my best to stay disciplined stay focused on you know what I'm trying to do and uh, I just feel good Uh, because I'm off the booze it allows me to find a way to get in a daily sweat which has been incredible just endorphins for me in the morning just carries me throughout the rest of the day even on a Sunday when I, I it's not going to be a productive day I'm I try to allow myself on the weekends to kind of slow down and uh, not really work but enjoy life and enjoy the balance you know within the within the the lines of following quarantine and uh, social distancing but Sunday morning I got in a great workout with my man Matt Como who is somebody that I had met through podcasting back in 2018 and just somebody I respect so much. And uh, it's been great to get in a workout with this guy every couple of weeks. Or it's more like every other month, I feel like. Um, we've only worked out twice, and I think I'm like, yeah, every other month we're working out. <laughs> You're full of shit, Bob. Um, but what I love about working out with this guy is not only do we get a great sweating, catch some rays from my Irish pale skin, but just the talks and the conversations and a very driven and goal-oriented person. And that energy and those conversations carries off to me and even I think back when we last talked to where I am now, almost two months later, just the conversation with him made me restructure my diet a bit, cut out a lot of things, added in some more nutritious foods, and I feel a lot better. I feel a lot healthier in my body. So it's always great to uh, you know get in a good sweat with somebody that you respect, who's just crushing it in his own lane. And so that was I, I greatly appreciated that. And then following that, something that I'm really stoked about. Your boy's in the is on the apartment hunt right now with two of my other homies. Not gonna say too much, but long story short, I've been wanting to live in Venice, California, since I was a young boy, growing up in Massachusetts, and I and it's it's getting there. It's finally potentially gonna happen. We checked out four spots on on Sunday, and we applied to one this morning. So this morning being Monday, I record these on Monday nights. So say your prayers for your boy and, and for his two homies because uh, I, I'm going, I'm shooting, I'm going for it. Moving to uh, hopefully Venice, and it's a place that I've always wanted to live, and I think it's just going to enhance every aspect of my life in every way possible being there. It's worth it. It's somewhat of a, it's not really a risk, but I have a really good at the content crib. I have a really good with Dylan and Steve, who I've been living with for three years now, 
But uh, something's telling me to take the leap to finally go for it. So I feel good. I feel confident. So say your prayers. Hopefully, we're going to be locking in this spot that we applied for. And fingers crossed, we'll be uh, starting off 2021 in a new spot, which I'd be really, really stoked about. Today, we dropped episode 50 of the pod. So obviously, came in fired up to this podcast, episode 51. Let's take a moment. Slow down, Bob. Hey, pump the brakes. Let's appreciate the fact that today we dropped episode 50 with my man, fellow 413 native, Rafal Leopold. Uh, incredible podcast. Of course, I say that every single time. I just love the word incredible because I think it just says so much about anything. That's incredible. This food's incredible. She's incredible. This podcast is incredible. Everything is incredible because it's bearded man content. Uh Raphael, man, I uh, met this guy probably two months ago at his 30th birthday party out in Malibu. Just, it was like an incredible day to meet this guy. And then fast forward a week later, we t- we run into each other, find out he's from the 413, which is where I grew up, Western Massachusetts. And uh, I've, I just have somehow found my way in the, in, in the way life has directed. I've been getting to know Raph quite a bit these last two, two and a half months. And uh, he's a great guy. And so I, I was able to pull him in and get him to sit down for a podcast. And it was about an hour and 45 and uh, a lot of wisdom, a lot of deep work for this man in the last six months. And it was really interesting because uh, around June, he had actually got COVID and there was a lot of self-development from him having to be quarantined and him being by himself. And it's weird how something so negative and dealing with COVID actually there was so much positive that came out of it and it allowed him to really slow down, think about the person who he is today, think about where he's going and he's made a lot of changes since and a lot of progress. And so I feel very fortunate and grateful that he was, he was able to sit down with me and this is somebody that really has never spoken on a podcast before. And so we deep dive into a lot of a lot of personal things, but uh, I've gotten some great feedback. Got a couple DMs today about the actual episode, and and that fires me up. At the end of the day, like, of course, do I want to see hundreds of thousands of download? Yes. Do I want to see a bunch of reviews? Yes. But when I get personal messages of people saying how the content has resonated with them, that fires me up, especially for the guests when uh, somebody like him who just hasn't really shared his voice all too often with the world, and I feel very fortunate to uh, have a platform to do it. So, if you ever get a, if you get a chance, check out episode fifty with Rafal. He's an incredible guy. A lot of production, event, um, uh, past experience, but uh, he's just getting warmed up, and uh, I'm very happy that we got him on the pod today. We're gonna give a quick shout out to my man Joel Devers. Devires, I hope I pronounced that right, Joel. I'm so sorry if I butchered it. You guys and gals, if you're a longtime listener, you know I'm bad with names, especially last names. Fun fact about me, every time I do a podcast with a guest, I always, before I fire up, there's really not much I check down with them before we get into it, other than, hey, do you have any questions? No? Okay, cool. Don't worry. I got you covered. Uh, I always ask, how do you pronounce your last name? Because I want to make sure that when I intro them, I get it right. Uh, it's a little hard when I'm doing these podcast reviews because unfortunately, I don't have Joel's number, and if I had Joel's number... I'd give him a ring, say, Joel, what's up? It's the bearded man, Bob A. How you doing? Thanks for listening. But because I can't call him, I'm going to give him a shout out on the podcast. He left a review, the 45th review of It's the Bearded Man podcast goes to my man, Joel. He said in the subject of the review, next huge podcaster, in all capital letters, must I say, a lot of emphasis when you go all caps, so shout out to that. He gave it five stars, let's go. And a really thoughtful review. He said, the one, the only, Bob Bay. Been listening to his podcast from when he was doing his Purpose in the Youth pods. And he's just got what it takes to have an awesome show. He makes sure to bring the energy and the inspiration every ep while pushing for himself and everybody listening to always try and get just a little bit better every day. He gives a mix of a look into his life, goals, and what he's working on while also having an awesome Diamond in the rough type guests that you may not have heard on other pods yet, but are sure to pop off soon enough. Easy five out of five stars. Get on the bearded man bandwagon now. Incredible review. Wow. (laughs) It's uh, when I read this last night, it was just like, damn, this is really dope. For those who are listening and don't know, I used to host a show called Purpose in the Youth, which feels so crazy to say used to because that was literally such a part of my life for three and a half years. Um, and so when I find that people have trickled over from the old show and are still listening to the bearded man, it fires me up. But Joel, if you hear this, thank you so much for taking the time to leave that review. And it's very clear to me based on that review that you are somebody that has been consuming my content for a minute. 
And uh, I, I can't say, I could literally spend a whole podcast probably just giving you a shout out because I greatly appreciate people that take the time to listen. But I, uh, I generally really appreciate you rocking with me and supporting me. And, uh, you know, hopefully one day the world will think the same as you about the podcast. But uh, with his review, that gets us 45 reviews. Uh, I was shooting for 50 by episode 50. We're five short, but hey, let's clap it up. Take it. Every single review that we can get. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those who have taken the time to leave a review. Today's topic, today's podcast, because I know you guys and gals are so sick of me talking about the bearded man's life. Sick, Bob. You're moving to Venice. Sick, Bob. You're crushing life and doing this. You're doing karaoke and wine nights. You're not even drinking booze. Blah, 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 blah. I know you guys are like, yo, kick it. Some of you probably fast forward like the first like eight minutes. You're like, I don't give a shit what this bearded guy has to say. I'm moving on. Next, let's get to the main Let's get to the main entree. Let's skip the appetizer of this guy talking about his life. Let's get to the main entree. I get it. I'm sorry. I just love doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to share everything and anything with you guys and gals. I want you to know what's going on in the bearded man brain. Today's topic, 27 lessons in 27 years. By the time this baby drops on Thursday, December 10th, we will be 24 hours out from my 27th birthday. That's right. Your boy's birthday is December 11th, this Friday, which would be tomorrow by the time this pod drops. 27 years young. Okay, let's get it right. Not 27 years old, 27 years young. And let me be clear. I for sure don't have all the answers, but I'd like to think I know a little bit. That's the point of these podcasts, right? 27 beautiful years around living on this beautiful earth. Your boy has been taking notes. Okay, I've been taking notes, been waiting 27 years to record this podcast and shed some bearded wisdom with you guys and gals on what I've learned. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. I, I hope you guys and gals enjoy it. Got a lot of great lessons and uh, we're going to dive into it. But before we do, I know you guys hate this part. I know you hate this part, but I got to say it. If you guys and gals enjoy this podcast at any moment in time, matter of fact, do it right now so then you don't have to worry about it later because you might forget or you might be driving or you might be running or you might be doing a million other things because we're all busy, busy people. If you enjoy this podcast at any moment in time, all that I ask, please screenshot this episode, post it to your IG story, tag me at Bob A, B-O, three B's, four A's and a Y, share it out on your IG story. If you want to really get into it, leave a little, you know, description of why you're sharing out. I love this podcast. I love this guy's voice. He's cooked, but I still come back and listen, blah, blah, blah. Write whatever you want. If not, just you throwing up on the story, tagging me. Poo, that's all I could ask for, baby. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Helps get the word out about, uh, what? It helps get the word out about the Bearded Man podcast. So I greatly appreciate it. Also, I had somebody recently that asked me, they're like, uh, it was actually on an IG live over on Friday. I did a random IG live, and somebody said, "Yeah, when when you do the uh, solo pods, like how much of it do you edit out?" And oh, it was my man Ben. I, he said, uh, "How many? How much of it do you edit out?" I go, Ben, I don't do any editing to these podcasts. So the solos, not a peep. The only edit, the only editing I'm doing is at the very front part of the podcast and the very end when I hit record, and there's like three seconds of dead air, and then I come in hot. And then at the very end, when I sign off, and then there's three seconds of dead air. Other than that, you're getting this podcast straight through. No cuts, no edits, no shenanigans. This is authentic and real. This is the highest level co- content. There's no con edits because I want you guys and gals to hear the authenticity. And I want you to think I manufactured some podcast. No, 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 no. Straight through, baby. That's how we roll. But before we get into it, because I'm about to really go off on this podcast, your favorite part of the pod too. The water break. Let me let me get some high quality water in me real quick. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's it. Never seems to fail the bearded man, but some high quality water that is free that came out of my fridge, and I love it. I love water. It's just so good for you. Twenty seven lessons in twenty seven years. First off. I'm turning 27, and let me just say this. Let me just get this out there right now. I'm just getting started. Just getting warmed up. Oven still on preheat. I haven't even gotten in the game yet, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like I'm still just getting started, and I love that. So much room to grow. A lot of progress in the last couple years, but damn, do we have a lot more to go. The gas tank is still very full, and we're just going to keep cruising on cruising. And age is really just a number. 
I don't know if I'm ever going to change my view. Excuse me. It's the uh, LaCroix backing up because I'm I'm a dummy and I drank a LaCroix before jumping on a podcast, which doesn't make any sense because then it starts bubbling in my body. So I apologize if you get a couple burps along this podcast. Oh, I'm so cooked. Um, age is just a number. I, 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 I don't know if, if my perspective might change with time and maybe in a couple of years, but I don't, I, I, I am so like, yes, it's a milestone and it's a way to track the amount of the, how long we've been on this earth, but I get more fired up as I kind of cross into the next number these last couple of years. Cause I feel like, I, you know, I made a lot of progress this year. I can't wait to see what the next year looks like and make some progress there. And so it's just this constant work in progress. Um, but yeah, I just, I just keep moving and grooving. And I think it's really important that we all celebrate our birthdays. We celebrate it as if it is a world holiday. I'm not saying you got to go out and pop bottles. I'm not saying you got to have some fancy dinner, but you got to treat yourself on your birthday. And it, you know, maybe circumstances you don't have the ability to treat yourself on your birthday. You have to work. You got to watch your kids, whatever. Find a time in, your, in the birthday month you designate for a whole day to you. You treat yourself. You get treated. You go out to dinner by yourself, you go get a massage. I mean, you do whatever makes you happy. Go for a walk in the park if that's going to make you happy. But I think it's important that we celebrate our birthdays. It was on that that day of your birthday that you were born X amount of years ago. And, you know, it's just like embrace it, enjoy it. So you better believe tomorrow, December 11th, I'm going to be enjoying my day. I took the day off from work. I'm not going to do a whole lot. I'm going to try finessing a massage in LA. Hopefully there's a, a place that's open that can squeeze me in, get my back loosened up. You know what I'm saying? Get nice and loose before I fly home on that red eye to uh, Massachusetts next week. Um, and then hopefully I'll hit the beach if I can, if the, the weather's great. And other than that, low key, but it's a day for myself. I'm going to just give it to me. I'm going to do whatever I want. And I'm going to enjoy it. And I think it's important that we do that for all of our birthdays. So in no particular order, are these lessons, except maybe the last one. I kind of put the last one there specifically on purpose. But other than that, these are there's no specific order. So it's not like number one's the most important and the 27th isn't or vice versa. I just thought about what are some of the biggest lessons I've learned. Type, 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 type. Looked it back, made some edits. Here we are today. That's the whole thing about these soul pods. Not a lot of overthinking, more just this is what I'm thinking. This is how I'm feeling. Run with it. Fire it off. Let's go. 27 lessons in 27 years. Strap on your seatbelt. Let's ride, baby. Number one, it costs zero dollars to be a nice person. Did you guys know that? Did you cost? Did you know that it costs you zero dollars to be a nice person? That's probably the greatest bargain of all time. Say please and thank you. Respond to people. Don't ghost them. If someone is mean to you, kill them with kindness. I do not allow anybody's negative energy to affect me anymore. I've, it's taking time. I haven't always had this mindset. I have always had this ability, but if somebody isn't nice to me, you ain't getting nothing from me. Why am I going to cave my energy, my precious time and give it to you? Because you want to be a bad person to me. It's not going to happen. So I constantly remind myself, it's going to cost me $0 to be a nice person. And it's going to make me feel really good because I'm going to give people energy. I'm going to make them feel good and everyone's going to be happy. So constant reminder, it costs $0 to be a nice person. Number two, shoot your shot. If a job interests you, apply. Are you attracted to that person? Slide into that DM. Is there a new hobby that seems like fun? Send it. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Shoot your shot. I'm telling myself this all the time. This girl I'm attracted to, I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm going to freaking slide through her DM she might ghost me. She might respond to me. She might give me a little light of day and then, you know, not respond. That's fine. I'm coming back in a couple of days. I'm gonna let that marinate. Come back for the fourth quarter, baby. Can't run. You can hide. <laughs> but I'm you, not, not, not in a creepy way, but like in general, like whether it's a job, whether it's a, somebody you're attracted to, I've always been a believer that it's so much easier to live the rest of your life knowing that you sh- took that shot and whether it goes in, whether it hits the side of the rim, whatever it might be. It's easier to live the rest of your life knowing you at least tried. So I take that for granted that that's just my mindset now. But there was once a time when I didn't have that confidence or I didn't have, I didn't kind of see it from that lens and that perspective. But now pretty much with anything, any bucket of my life, 
I take the shot. If it's of interest and I and I and I I feel like it's something I want to do, I shoot the shot. And no matter how the results play out, I pat myself on the back for at least trying. Shoot your shot. Lesson number three. Nobody knows what they're doing either. Let's be honest, okay? Some people look like they're on chapter one. Some look like they're on chapter 10. Some people look like they're on, they're already writing the, the conclusion of their story. But remind yourself, each, each day, we're writing the script of our own story. Now, when I say you, by the way, let me just make this clear. This is really me talking to my own self. So I'm not here to point at you guys and gals through this microphone into your eardrum saying, I got all the answers. You need to listen to me. It's the bearded man way or the highway, blah, blah, blah. This is just from my perspective, from what I've learned. I don't have all the answers in the book. Just want to make sure that's known. But this is literally, these podcasts especially are literally me saying out loud the things that I need to remind myself of. So you better believe I'm trying to practice what I preach as well. But there's always room to grow. Um, and going off this, this, this nobody knows what they're doing either. We also have to remember, it doesn't matter where somebody else is in their life. Like we have to just worry about ourselves, just us. So don't worry about the journey of other people. You can take, you can pull from inspiration from them. You can learn from them. You can uh, take notes on what's worked and what hasn't, but just know that we're all just trying to figure it out. So if you're in a space right now where you don't know what you're doing and you have no clue where to go, it's okay. This is the fun part. When you don't know where you're going, this is actually the best part because you can go any direction you want. Here's your golden ticket, ladies and gentlemen. Go anywhere you want and try anything you want to do because once you get locked into a path, you're stuck. But if you don't know what you're really doing, you don't know what you want to do, this is the best time you could ever, you, this is the best time of your life. You have nothing to lose and everything gain. So try a bunch of different things. Number five, this is really something that I've been learning in the last month, month and a half, uh, especially coming off of last week's episode with the, you know, finishing off the entire month of doing 30 days of gratitude. Number five, express gratitude daily. Whether it's writing in a journal, saying it out loud, remind yourself of all the great things in your life. Recently, definitely because of doing the 30 days of journaling, I literally, when I wake up in the morning, as I'm recording these solar pods, I do these in my bedroom. I'm looking at the bed where I sleep. When I wake up every morning now, as soon as my two feet hit the ground, thump, they hit the ground. I don't stand up. I luckily sit across from a mirror and I tell myself out loud, I'm thankful that I woke up this morning. I'm thankful for my health or grateful, thankful. I'm grateful that I have financial stability. I'm grateful for this podcast that's rolling out today. I'm grateful for all the incredible people that I work with, blah, blah, blah. And I, I literally would say like 10 things out loud. And I'm just trying to ground myself literally and reminding myself of like, you damn well better not take this life and this day for granted. Remind yourself of all those great things that are happening in your life, whether it's the food on the table, a bed to sleep in, whether your mom and dad are alive. It's why I literally tattooed the word gratitude on my thumb because I see it every single day when I'm grabbing a cup of coffee, when I'm grabbing my phone, when I'm typing, when I'm putting on my clothes to go work out, when I'm taking a shower. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Just take five minutes a day to show appreciation and I guarantee you it will make you feel so much more appreciative of your day-to-day -day life. Absolutely crucial. Express gratitude daily. Number six, don't tell yourself a bad story. Ooh, is this a good one? We overthink and allow the thoughts in our mind to create this bad story, right? We didn't get the job because we must not be good enough. The person we are attracted to didn't vibe with us because we must not be good enough. We rationalize and we make up these own stories in our head. Think about that for a second. I do it to myself. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting through meditation and through journaling. I've learned to recognize a thought as a thought and not attach myself to the thought. But think about how many times you have told yourself a bad story and you've created the narrative in your mind because there's you don't know the facts, so you're just going to make it up like, oh, the person didn't text me back. Well, they must not like me. Oh, well, who said that? Maybe they, what about, maybe they are busy. Maybe they are getting on a plane. Maybe they saw it and didn't get a chance to read it because somebody called them and when they hung up, they had to go make dinner. We create the bad stories in our mind. Understand that those thoughts, like I said, that's us creating the story. 
So let it go and don't pick up that negative story. Think about it. We tell ourselves a bad story all day, every day. How about we tell ourselves a good story? That's lesson six. Lesson number seven, fall in love with yourself. Very, very important. You're talking into the love man himself because I'm not somebody that's been in a lot of relationships in my life. Weirdly feel like it was, that's like on purpose because I've, I I don't know. I I have a weird feeling that I never uh, had a bunch of relations growing up because it was like this path of where I am now, I guess. I don't know. That sounds so woo-woo and so like weird to think about out loud, but all all this time to myself has allowed me to really become who I am. And if I If I had, you know, I have no regrets or whatever, but if I had somebody with me along this path, I I wouldn't have made the progress that I've made because I would have had to split the time and energy and yeah, so I don't know, but I I think it's really important that we need to fall in love with ourselves because I feel like I've seen a lot of people that seek other people for love and happiness when they don't even love themselves. They don't even feel happy by themselves. We really got to fall in love with the person that we see in the mirror before we can fall in love with anyone else. It sounds, might sound corny, might sound weird. You might not get it. I'm not saying like go make out with yourself in the mirror. (laughs) It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like we need to be confident about the person that we see in the mirror. We need to focus on our personal list, whether it's physical, mental health, whatever we have on our to-do list, wherever, wherever we're at career wise, if we're in school. We need to start focusing on ourselves before we can add anyone into the mix. So fall in love with yourself before you can allow anyone to fall in love with you or vice versa. I hope I said that right. Number eight, be aware of who you surround yourself with. Do these people encourage you or do they push you down? What do these convos look like? Is it catching up about drama or is it open-minded convos that inspire you, that make you feel alive? Like I was saying in the beginning of this podcast with Matt Cohen, we got a nice, nice little Sunday sweat in Santa Monica. Beautiful. When I when I see this guy, we're not talking about drama. We are talking about very thoughtful, open-minded conversations about dreams, about our goals, about what we're learning about ourselves, about how we're pushing ourselves, about how we're honing in on our personal health, how we're honing in on family relationships, how we're trying to balance being the best version of ourselves with trying to help others. Like, you want to have those types of conversations. If every time you go around certain people and it's just about drama and negativity, it's just going to impact you. It's going to impact the way you think. And I think a really good measure of understanding are we around the right people or are we not is reminding ourselves of, and I don't know where this theory started from or who deserves the credit, but I've heard it on podcasts and you probably heard it yourself but we're the product of the five people we surround ourselves with the most. Look around at the five people you are closest to. Are you happy with where those people are headed? I'm not saying you have to be similar goals, but are you happy with way their views and their, their morals and their like, like what they believe in in life? Like if not, it's maybe a good, this is maybe the moment to start reassessing where, who you surround yourself with. So, you know, even just living with two people like Steve and Dylan, who are very business oriented, they're entrepreneurs, they're creatives. It's a very inspiring house to live in the content crib because they're always working on their own personal projects. So I get inspired to do the same. So I think it's really, really important. We need to be aware of who we're surrounding ourselves with because that will determine the way we think and who we become without a doubt. Lesson number nine positivity is the only option. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. As soon as we allow ourselves to only look at the positives of situation, it gets easier because there's no option B. No matter how things play out, how does this moment positively help us? That's what we need to be asking ourselves. What can I learn? How can this help me become a better version of myself? How is this gonna set me up for future success? Even when things aren't going the way we hope they would and it feels like the whole world is weight is on our shoulders, the weight is on our shoulders, stop and ask yourself, how is this going to benefit me? How is this setting me up for future success? In the moment, it's not easy to do. I promise you it is not going to be easy to do, but 
looking back on it, there will be so much more gratitude for what you learned from that challenging moment and how it helped shape you into a better person. So positivity is the only option. Even in the darkest of times when it doesn't feel great, you will get through this and just know with a positive smile on your face, this is going to be help shape you into a better person. Number 10, invest in yourself. Read books, listen to podcasts, watch films and documentaries that interest you. Do that workout class you've been interested in. Pick up that new hobby you've wanted to try for years. Constantly, constantly invest in yourself, okay? I'm not saying go buy an an Audi R8 and that's a good investment in yourself because that's something you've always wanted. Like Lean into opportunities that are going to help you grow as a person mentally, um, physically, uh, things that you're interested in, you want to learn more about, if you're curious about, invest in yourself. It's the best thing I, I, I've continuously done. I don't even think twice when I buy books now because I go, this is an investment in myself. Do I, can I spend 50 bucks on other things? Yes, but this is going to help me better myself in the long run. Invest in yourself. So, so important. Number 11, speak up. If you're not feeling great, tell someone. If you don't like the direction the company you are working for is headed, say something. If your friend's decisions or words hurt you, let them know. It's all about how you communicate it to others, but speak up, okay? I'm not saying if you're in a meeting on Zoom with people that you work with and somebody throws out a bad idea and you just immediately shut them down because you don't feel like it's the right idea, don't do that, but communicate professionally, calmly, how you feel, especially if you're in a headspace where you you don't feel good, you just feel you you like you mentally are not in a good headspace, and maybe you're crying a lot, and maybe you feel like you're just not catching a break. Tell somebody. Don't just put a smile on your face because you don't want anybody to ask questions. We are all human. I've had my fair share of rough moments. I'm getting much better at beating them because I'm wiring my brain to see the positivity in everything and to speak up when I'm not feeling okay. But I have those moments too. And the best way to get through those moments is by sharing it. Whether you're a podcaster and you want to talk about it, whether you're a vlogger and you want to vlog about it, whether you're a writer and you want to write about it, even writing on a piece of paper and freaking setting that thing on fire, I bet you that'll make you feel better. Tell somebody if it feels better to tell your best friend, to tell a parent, to tell a loved one, a sibling. Speak up. Very therapeutic and very helpful. Don't let things bottle up inside you. Number 12, lean into your strengths. We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. There's no question about it. My strengths, talking, aka this podcast, and my beard. Two greatest strengths. Told the girl that I met over the weekend, I said, it's my greatest asset. She laughed. I thought I was funny. Clearly, I'm not a comedian. My weaknesses, I got a lot of them. Not great with numbers, not the most design oriented person. I got a lot more I could list. I'm just not going to waste your guys and gals' time. But double down on what you're good at and what you enjoy. Find those strengths, find ways to take those strengths and utilize the things that you're interested in. And that's usually a good way to find your purpose or your passions or things that you enjoy and could potentially make a living doing. But then what's really key is find people who are really good at your weaknesses that can help you out. When I pump out these Instagram content uh, for the podcast that you guys and gals might see on my IG story, that's not me. No, 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 no. I'm not good at that. So what do I do? I got my man Joey Pusatari out in Chicago cooking up that high quality content for me because that's his strength. So I find people that are strength, str- stronger in areas of life where I'm weak and I have them help me. And so similarly, find what you're good at, lean into those strengths and find people that can offset you in the areas that you're weak. But just know everyone has strengths and weaknesses. If you're not good at something, don't beat yourself up. Um, I mean, there's plenty of things I'm not good at. I just lean into the things that I know I am good at, which is, you know, I hope podcasting. Um, Number 13, you have to start somewhere in order to become great. I had somebody 
DM me today from a podcast. Shout out to Lauren if she hears this. I don't think she will, but hey, you never know. She heard uh, today's podcast, episode 50, and she reached out and sent a very thoughtful DM that I really appreciated, and I'm not going to share it. No, there's no need to do that, but she uh, pretty much was saying that, you know, I, I uh, think you're a great podcaster and the way you, you know, articulate and have conversations and get people to open up, and I, I kind of laughed, and I sent a, a message back to her laughing because little does she know that she's just seeing the product of somebody who's put in the reps of doing well over 200 plus podcasts. But had I not done that 200 plus podcast, I wouldn't have gotten to this place where I feel very confident with sharing my voice and very confident to sit down with guests. But there was a, a time in place a couple of years ago, not long ago, when I was just starting off, I had no idea what I was doing. I wasn't confident. I wasn't doing solo podcasts because if I turned on the mic in front of me by myself, I would have just blanked. I would have stuttered. I wouldn't have felt confident enough to share my voice. But like I said, she's seen the product of somebody who's been putting in the reps. So I think we have to remind ourselves that nobody's born great. Nobody is born perfect at doing the thing. When we see these people that are successful at something, we are seeing the product of somebody who's put in a lot of time, effort, and energy and getting good at something. So nobody's going to be a superstar when they start off. But as long as they put in those reps over a long period of time, that momentum picks up. As Brandon Cohen, founder of Liquid IV, said in a podcast, I think he said it on the podcast that I did with him, he said, starting is the momentum that we need in order to become great. And that's the key. You have to start in order to become great. Remind yourself of that. Before we finish the last 14, quick water break because your boy's on a roll. Quick, quick, quick water break. Oh, my God. So good. Some of, this, some of the best water in LA, I think, right here. Coming out of Hawthorne, California. Hit me up. Number 14, it's you versus you. Do not fall for the comparison trap. Accept that the only person you're truly up against is the person that you see in the mirror. I've done it in my past where I see other podcasters getting bigger guests, have more reviews on their iTunes podcast app, have more downloads, have more episodes. I've fallen for that trap before, and then I realized... How is this benefiting me? Oh, wait, it's not. I'm allowing myself to get caught up in their story, their chapter 12, their chapter 18, when I'm still at chapter four. I'm not gonna allow myself to do that. If anything, I'm gonna get inspired by the success they're having and say to myself, well, if they're doing it, who says that I can't do it? And so I have trained myself to just think and mentally tell myself, it is you versus you, bearded man. I'm accepting that every person is on their own path and so am I. So I'm just going to become the best version of myself. I'm going to try to get a little better every single day. But I'm not going to allow myself to fall for the comparison trap and, and beat myself up because I'm not where somebody else is. If I see somebody else successful, crushing it where I want to be, I'm going to remind myself, well, if they're doing it, so can you, bearded man. So can you. Number 15, really important. Make every dollar count. This go, special shout out to the first job I ever had from my uncle John. John Duda, Class Grass Garden Center in Granby, Massachusetts. If you guys and gals need some plants and you live in 413, go support him. First job I ever had, I think I was in seventh grade, which means I was probably 12 years young. Uh, definitely illegal to be working for him, but because it was family, I think they, you know, they let that fly under the radar. But the greatest thing I ever learned was the value of a dollar because I would show up, I would work all day, I would make some money, I'd put it in my pocket, and then it was up to me to how I wanted to spend that money. But I knew what it was going to take to go make that money next weekend, so I had to spend it wisely. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account, a dollar is a dollar, no matter how you look at it. Or if you're in a different country, because hey, we got pod, we got people listening to this podcast around the globe, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, okay? A lot of majority in the U.S., Shout out to my U.S. folks and the dollar bill. But we got people in Europe. We got people in Africa. We got people all over the globe, baby. This is a worldwide podcast, baby. Let's go. Uh, whatever your currency is, appreciate it, I guess, right? I should have thought that through. I didn't think about that going into this podcast. But whether you're buying clothes, a car, shoes, you're going on vacation, enjoy yourself. But be aware of where that hard, that hard-earned money is going. And with something that I've, I've learned early on, and, and I think this is an inspiration from the documentary, The Minimalist, 
uh, by a filmmaker by the name of Matt Diavello, who I've been very fortunate to have met and podcasted with, but live below your means. So just because you can afford something doesn't necessarily mean you should buy it. Live below your means, save up, pay off bills, make your money work hard for you, invest it, find ways to get that money to double up and triple up over time. But that's something that I am always trying to remind myself, make every single dollar count. And also live your life too, but within within reason. Number 16, if you guys and gals follow me on IG, you already know this. Win your morning before you win the day. Whether it's the first 30, 60, 90, or 120 minutes, start off the day by doing things for you. Read your book, work out, journal, listen to a podcast. Don't check texts, emails, social media notifications. Don't check any of that. Setting yourself up for the day and crossing off your to-do list before you tackle anything else is going to carry carry the momentum through the rest of the day. So I'm a big believer of that. You win the morning, you win the day. And I think it's really important that even if you only get 20 minutes to your morning, use that for you. And an easy hack to getting more time in your morning is by going to bed earlier so you can wake up earlier. But whatever you got to do, find ways to win your morning so it carries the momentum through the rest of the day. For me, it's that workout, it's a meditation, it's journaling, it's reading, listening to podcasts, and then answering texts, and then answering emails, and then starting up work. So I think it's really important to win your morning before the rest of the world you know, comes throwing a million things at you. Because now that we're all connected with our phones by our hips, people can communicate with you at any moment in time. But I feel like we have to build... Uh, walls so we can think and we can process and then go back to reality. Number 17, patience, young grasshopper. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't get worked up thinking about all the work that needs to be done this year, this month, or this week. Count up the small daily wins. It's very easy to get anxious about where we want to be and where we're not yet, but slow down and just ask yourself, what are the one to three things that I can do today that will get me a little bit farther. It's that 1% growth per day, as I talked about in a recent podcast, got that shit tatted on my knuckle, baby, as a constant reminder. But appreciate that goes hand in hand with you know patience, young grasshopper. Appreciate that the longer it takes you to get to X destination, the more time you have to get prepared. So the longer it's taking you to get somewhere, the more time you're getting better, stronger, and, and, and sharper at the craft. So had I popped off at episode 10 of podcasting, I wouldn't have been ready for it. I was still a young podcaster, but say an episode, this one popped off, I would feel much more prepared for it because I've put in the reps. So know that being patient allows us to get better and, and stronger at a craft. And I know we, we all want to get to that destination, but as I'm about to say, happiness isn't just a destination, which goes into lesson number 18. Happiness is a choice, not a destination. The amount of time I've told myself, if only I had X, then I would be happy. It doesn't happen. Not a chance. We can choose to be happy with where we are today and appreciate all the good. Kind of goes back to the gratitude of what I was talking about earlier, but happiness is a choice. It's not a destination. I've tricked myself into believing that once I start doing this, I'm going to be happy. Or once I get this, I'm going to be happy. Or once I interview this person, I'm going to be happy. Happiness is found in the day-to-day grind and you got to find ways to just appreciate it all. Sounds really guru and rah-rah, but happiness is a choice, not a destination. Lesson number eight, 19, keep going. Got this tatted on me as well. When you feel like giving up, think of this bearded man's voice. You will not stop. You will keep going. Even if you have to slow down and get down to a crawl on your hands and knees, do not give up on the race. Little bit of progress. Keep going. Do not toss in the towel. Ignore the results. Ignore what people are saying about you. Keep on going. Please. And speaking of which, I feel like I missed a... I might have missed one, but I don't think I did. Oh, there's so many that I don't know. We'll find out when I replay this episode. So if I missed one, I'm sorry. Um... Okay, so that was number 19. Number 20, encourage others. Really important. Cheer people on while they're running their own race in life. 
You never know how your encouragement could flip their day around. Give the energy you wish to receive. So just, I'm not saying you have to go out of your way and send a hundred texts today or make a hundred phone calls, but when there's an opportunity, you can encourage a coworker, encourage a friend, encourage a family member, do it. It could, it could flip their day around. It could give them that little extra push they needed. Give energy to the world and to the people around you the way you you would hope to receive. You want people encouraging you. You want people recognizing you for the work that you're doing. And how do you get that? You give it off as well. So encourage people. Number 21, each 24 hours is a battle. Similar to what I was talking about earlier when I wake up and I put my two feet on the, on the ground. I'm saying all this stuff I'm grateful for and appreciative. I remind myself of bearded man, 24 hours, that's the only thing you gotta worry about right now. It is a battle, this is it, this is the moment. You need to give today, It. All. this is the day. You gotta give it your all because there are days when we wake up more excited than others because we know we have this big opportunity coming and there's some days we just kinda mail it in, we're like, oh, it's another day. No, 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 it's not just another day. This is a beautiful opportunity to push ourselves to get a little bit better. So I've been reminding myself, this every 24 hours is a battle. I need to get fired up. I need to crush this battle ahead of me, which could be a million things in front of me that day, but just crush the day ahead. 20, each 24 hours is a battle. Lesson number 22, do your best. That's it. No matter the results, no matter how things play out, always put your best foot forward. It's all you can do. There's always going to be more room to grow. Mistakes are going to happen. But as long as we're trying, the results will come with time. Pat yourself on the back. I know it can be hard sometimes when you're doing your best. You're giving 110%. You're not seeing the results you wish you would see. But pat yourself on the back. Keep going. It's going to play out. As long as you're doing your best, that's the only thing you can control. There's a lot of things in this life you can't control. What you can control is the amount of effort and time and energy you put into something. Number 23, be aware of your social media diet. Oh, baby, is this important. Are you feeding your mind positive content or negative? Think about how the content you see daily makes you feel. Does it fire you up? Does it motivate you? Does it give you that little extra boost? If it's good, keep it around. If it's bad, get it out of here. I don't know if this is a big thing that's going around on social media, but just like your dieting, which we all know we should be aware of and feeding ourselves good good food. Similarly with social media, be very aware of your social media diet and get out the shit that does not help you and does not make you feel good mentally. Get it out of here because it impacts the way your day goes and it impacts how you feel about yourself and, it, and it, it, can, it can have a domino effect. Be aware of the social media diet. Number 24, focus on your breath. Bet you guys didn't see that one coming unless you read the description on the show. Anytime you feel anxious, annoyed, worked up, stressed, insert any emotion, focus on your breath. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Deep breath in through your nose. Deep breath out through your mouth. My nose is a little stuffy. If you heard it, I'm sorry. Do it 10 times. Come back. Open your eyes. And you'll feel more refreshed. Anytime you feel anxious, worked up, emotions, any, anything, anything that you just feel off-centered, you're not grounded, close your eyes and just focus on your breath. Ignore the million thoughts in your mind or the text you just read or the email you just got. Slow down and just breathe. Lesson number 24, focus on your breath. Number 25, like I was just talking about, your body is your temple. Take care of it. Exercise it daily, feed yourself a a healthy diet, and listen to your body when it needs rest. I think that's something that I've been very appreciative during quarantine because I'm not spending as much time commuting or you know driving around. I've been really pushing for eight hours of sleep per night, and I can feel it in my body. Your body is your vehicle. Sometimes we got to push it and get you know four hours of sleep one night and five hours the next night and maybe three hours the next night, but over a long period of time. Get those eight hours of sleep. Feed yourself healthy food because that's going to give you energy throughout the day. And and get exercise. Get those endorphins in every day, whether it's going for a walk, a run, working out, a bicycle. I don't care. Get in at least 30 minutes a day of, of endorphins to get the blood flowing. 
if you guys and gals are curious as to how I have all this high energy all the time, and it's like, yeah, what does this guy do? How does he have this much energy? I really do think it's because of this. I take care of my body. I exercise it daily. I feed it the right foods. I get a lot of sleep. And that way I'm ready to go with the day ahead of me. So take care of your body because it's your temple. Number 26, run at your own pace. There is no first, there's no second, there's no third place when it's you versus you, like I was talking about earlier. It's very easy to compare ourselves to the people that we're up against and other people that are in this world that we're traveling, whatever industry or path you might be on, but understand it's you versus you. If we need a break, slow down. When the inspo hits, run with it. But at the end of the day, you're running your own race. And when you run your own race, it doesn't matter what place you come in because you're up against nobody but yourself. You are already in first place. You will be in first place no matter no matter what. As long as you keep running your own race, you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. So run at your own pace and take breaks when you need it and get right back on that horse whenever you, whenever you feel better. 27th and final lesson, be your biggest hype man or hype woman. I've talked about this a lot on recent podcasts. So very important. We need to believe in ourselves before the world does. We need to become our biggest hype man and hype woman always. Whether you have zero people supporting you or a hundred people or a thousand or a million. It is on us to be our biggest hype man or hype woman. We need to encourage ourselves the most. We need to get ourselves fired up. That's why I do those those videos of me dancing in the mirror before I do these podcasts. I am my biggest hype man. I fire myself up. I crank up that energy when I need it. If I rely on other people, I'm in trouble because if they don't have the energy to give, then I'm in trouble. How am I going to create the energy? I create the energy from within. I boost, I crank up the music. I, I say positive affirmations. I remind myself of gratitude daily, but I am my biggest hype man and you guys and gals should do the same. So in recap, Ladies and gentlemen, 27 lessons in 27 years. Number one, it costs zero dollars to be a nice person. Number two, shoot your shot. Number three, nobody knows what they're doing either. Number four, everyone will have an opinion. Number five, express gratitude daily. Number six, don't tell yourself a bad story. Number seven, fall in love with yourself. Number eight, Be aware of who you surround yourself with. Number nine, positivity is the only option. Number 10, invest in yourself. Number 11, speak up. Number 12, lean into your strengths. Number 13, you have to start in order to become great. Number 14, it's you versus you. Number 15, make every dollar count. Number 16, Win your morning before you win the day. Number 17, patience, young grasshopper. Number 18, happiness is a choice, not a destination. Number 19, keep going. Number 20, encourage others. Number 21, each 24 hours is a battle. Number 22, do your best. Number 23, be aware of your social media diet. Number 24, focus on your breath. Number 25, your body is your temple. Number 26, run at your own race. Run at your own pace, excuse me. And number 27, become your biggest hype man or hype woman. That's 27 lessons to 27 years. I am out of breath, but oh baby, I hope those are some good lessons because uh, I'll tell you right now, reading those back out loud and seeing them, I could think of all the specific moments. I could do a full podcast on every single lesson and... Uh, Yeah, those are just some of the lessons that I've learned and I hope they're somewhat inspirational or something that you guys and gals can take and add to your tool belt. My challenge for you guys and gals, if you made it this far, which lesson resonated with you the most? Think about it. Look at the description of the show. I have all the lessons written out. Think about how you can incorporate those into your life starting today. Which one resonated with you the most? Which one do you think you could really get the most value from? And think about how you could add that into your life today. That's my challenge for you guys and gals. Before we get into the questions from the BMC, the Bearded Man community, quick water break. We've, we need three water breaks on this episode because I just keep rolling. And then we'll uh, get this thing wrapped up. Honestly, thank you guys and gals so much for rocking with me through this content. 
You could be listening to a million other podcasts in the world, but the fact that you're listening to me right now is ooh so grateful, especially for the 27th year podcast for you, boy. Um, questions from the BMC. We got three questions. First question from Shannon Edelstein. Shout out to you, Shannon. How do you get yourself back on track if you've hit a slump in work or life? Great question, Shannon. Similar to what I was saying about the becoming your biggest hype man, um, a couple of things I'll do. Uh, number one will be meditate. Uh, meditation has been super, 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 super crucial for me. The biggest takeaway from meditation is learning how to separate the thoughts in your mind from who you are. And so sometimes when you hit that slump, it's the it's you telling yourself a bad story. It's you creating the thoughts of like, oh, my life isn't where it needs to be. Oh, this person doesn't like who I am. Oh, blah, 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 blah. We make, we make up those thoughts, so that's what gets us in the slump. What we need to do is separate ourselves from those thoughts, and that's what I do. So anytime I'm not feeling myself in work or life, I meditate. I separate, I separate myself from those thoughts, and I let them pass through one ear and out the other. Uh, I get a workout in. I, I uh, In the middle of the day when I maybe I'm, I'm like feeling get a little bit tired, I'll put on some music. I'll get up. I'll walk around. I'll dance a little. I'll get the blood flowing. So I think it's just about understanding that you have a, a switch inside you like all of us do where we can literally snap of a finger. We're out of the slump. Just like that. Shannon, you're in that slump right now. Once again, now it's gone. Just like that. One more time. Shannon, you're in the slump. Now you're not. It's a flip of a switch. It's a change in a mindset. It's a change in perspective. Don't allow yourself to tell yourself that bad story of, of whatever is causing you to be in that slump in life or in work or whatever it might be and go, no, that's actually not true. I'm crushing life. I'm getting better. I'm just getting warmed up. Don't tell yourself a bad story, Shannon. We all do it. I do it, but I separate myself from the thought and it allows me to get right back uh, to where I need to be. Shout out to second question from Matt Bailey. When did you realize it was important to be 100% authentic? Great question, Matt. 1,000% coming right from Gary Vee. 2016, when I was really diving into his content, thank goodness I found his stuff because it gave me the green light to be my most authentic self, which is like how I got into the whole branding when I was driving Uber and I was hosting Purpose in the Youth podcast. I was the podcaster by day, Uber driver by night. I was sharing stories from me driving Uber and it gave me the confidence to just own who I am. So it has to be from Gary Vee. He just pushes that message and that energy of like own who you are. Don't try to be someone you're not. And he always talked about how the end of eight mile when Eminem calls himself out on all the bluff and then it's the other MC's chance to rap battle him and there's nothing that he can say to him because Eminem just owned up to himself about who he is and all the bad things that are happening in his life. So I think similarly, it's like when you own up to who you are and you call and you just own authentic, authentic, authentically who you are, nobody can call you out on your BS and you're just so you, you're just so authentically you that like you're not creating a perception of somebody that you're not. So I got to give a credit to Gary Vee because that allowed me to be so authentically myself for the whole podcaster by day, Uber driver by night. And then even, you know, as I've carried it through as like podcast performance specialist for Liquid IV and doing this podcast. So it also has just been repetition, man. But let me tell you, Matt, if I can do it, so can you just become the best version of yourself. Don't let other people's opinions change that from you and become your biggest hype, man. Be authentic to yourself. That is so important. Third and final question coming from Zach Tidmore. What did you learn from the touring phase of your career? That's a great question, Zach. Uh, for those who don't know, I, I, I have, I've had brief, brief, brief experiences of being what I would uh, air quote a tour manager, not really an actual tour manager. I was more of like a hospitality manager where I'd go on the road with my homie Dylan and I've done it for uh, another artist as well. Um, and it, it, I wasn't really doing like a true tour manager job, but it was at a really important time in my life where it was the fall of 2016 and then maybe into early 2017 when I was still trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. I had just getting, started getting into podcasting, so that was still a work in progress, just getting into the Uber grind. And so I had an opportunity, I'd have opportunities presented to myself to go on the road and tour. Um, but I think the one thing I learned about that was like, you have to try things to figure out what works and what doesn't. And so I did the touring and it was fun, it was cool, but 
I'm a very structured, organized person, and that lifestyle is so far from structured and organized. Even at the highest level of a Justin Bieber tour, Shawn Mendes tour, yes, everything is like detail oriented and scheduled out. But like, you're on a bus, you're traveling, you're there's flight delays, there's a lot of uncontrollables. And so I just realized that I'm somebody that much more likes waking up and sleeping in my own bed and controlling like where I live and having repetition and same routines. So I think the biggest takeaway was just like, you got to try things and find what works and what doesn't. And the touring lifestyle was for sure not made for me. I enjoyed it. I leaned into it. It couldn't have happened at a better time in my life. But um, I think it was just a great time for me to go try something that I thought was really interesting. And I just realized it wasn't meant for me. So great, great, great question, Zach. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, 51 episodes of It's the Bearded Man podcast. 27 lessons to 27 years. Um, feel very grateful for where I am today. Uh, as this podcast drops on December 10th, the Thursday, I'm still 26 years young for another 24 hours. But going into 27, I feel very fortunate. I feel like I'm just getting started. I'm just getting warmed up. A lot of fuel in the tank. Um, but I greatly, 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 greatly appreciate you guys and gals for listening to this podcast. Whoever you are, wherever in the world you are, thank you, thank you, thank you. It means the world to me. If you have enjoyed this podcast in any way, please share it out on your IG story. Screenshot this episode, post it to your IG story, tag me at Bob A, B-O, three B's, four A's and a Y. Share it out. It's how we organically grow this podcast from the ground up. It helps grow the numbers and it helps just share the word. So just know that I appreciate those that are doing it and uh, we're going to grow this podcast one step at a time, baby. So I hope wherever you are in the world, you're crushing it. Keep going. You got a lot more bearded content coming from your boy. We got three, no, we have two more episodes uh, before the end of the year, before the end of the bearded man year. I'm going to take two weeks off at the end of the year um, and we'll come back hot into 2021 so two more podcasts for 2020 and then we'll come in hot for 2021 and just just know we got a lot more great content in the way so thank you for tuning in it's your boy bob bay we'll catch you guys and gals soon enough it's the bearded man podcast see you